What's up everybody? It's your girl Ray Amari back here with another video. I apologize in advance for the low energy. I had a really rough day at work. Um, if you want to hear about my day at work, um, hit me up, slide in my DMs, and I'll gladly vent about it. Couple of disclaimers. One, Jesus is bowling outside with pure boulders and lightning rods from the underworld. That's what's going on outside. Occasional hail, flash flood warning. All of that but I'm being consistent okay I set a video a day so I'm trying to film through this and if you know me hey, I hate thunderstorms I hate thunderstorms and yeah this is a task for me because this is like making me very anxious so like if this video ends up being like all over the place I'm trying to be as concise as possible but know that I'm very nervous right now and very like distracted um i'm not scared of the thunder it's like just overstimulating for me and it like messes with my anxiety really badly second disclaimer you might hear police sirens um because they are camping out downstairs and protesting ice and fighting for our children and the rights of families to stick together and um you know anti-immigration law all of that wonderful stuff so they're downstairs and sometimes they they're chanting or whatever I really don't know if they like stood out there and just got soaked or if they moved I have no clue but there's a lot of police presence third and most importantly uh, if you can see the title of this video I'm going to be talking about cutting and self-harm I just want to put a trigger warning out there if this is not um, a video that you are in a space to watch feel free to click away now because I am going to be getting into some detail um, about my personal experience I'm not going to be speaking from any level of expertise or knowing um, or any like definitive terms I'm just going to be talking about my personal experience with self-harm and um, coping skills that I've acquired over the last couple of years with that being said I'm gonna get right into the video so I said um, in a few videos that I started self-harming in about first grade um, I wasn't full-blown cutting but I was experimenting I suppose um, so when I would get in depressive stages like I would have insomnia a lot and I would just like be up and I would like sneak into the kitchen and get like test different knives and see like how they would cut on my skin because um there's a big misconception that like of why people cut everybody cuts for different reasons um but my reason and what I've like heard from a lot of um peers or friends that have also experience with self-harm that it's it's about feeling something um it's like you know like pain that's so deep that you you're numb like it's to take away that like feeling of numbness and be like okay like i'm human i can feel like i can't feel in the capacity that i need to feel right now but this is like supplementing that's my rationale or was my rationale um so i just wanted to deeply feel something when I got into high school um, the cutting got more severe as I said in I think the previous video I was in um, a verbally abusive relationship or emotionally not so much verbally I'll say like emotionally manipulative abusive relationship and there was one time in particular I remember um i had just overcame an assault at that time around that time and we were walking at night i don't believe this was like i think this was on the same day like my memory and that's a like a big thing with ptsd that i thought was like abnormal i can't remember a lot of my experiences especially that were like centered around trauma because what the brain tries to do is protect you as much as possible so blocking out thoughts that like aren't helping you function like so there's a large part of high school and stuff that 
I don't remember at all like no recollection and it gets really embarrassing and it's really discouraging sometimes with like friends say, oh you remember when we do this or did this and I'm like no what really bothers me is like when people like have issues with me or something if I did something and I'm just like I'm sorry like it's like an out-of-body experience like I wasn't present like I don't remember at all so anyway that's neither here nor there but at the time um, we were walking somewhere at night and the there was a shadow because um, we were walking under street lights and there was a shadow that was like increasingly getting bigger behind me and it was like just a regular person walking behind us but it looked like the silhouette of the person who had just assaulted me and like I had like this this huge attack about it and within that same time frame like he was very upset at me for whatever reason and I had like etched sorry into my arm and that's when I knew like I had a problem like I knew it was a like obviously I knew cutting wasn't okay but like I, like I knew it was a severe problem so when I got to college um, I went to school like six hours away from home so I really didn't have any other coping mechanisms outside of cutting um, usually like with high school I like had a I had a tribe like shout out to my squad from high school like I had a great um, support system that whether they knew I was going through something or not they just help me be better like just by being them so shout outs to them but um i didn't have that anymore when i went away to school i didn't know anybody i was starting completely over and so i resorted to cutting a lot and um i would cut on my arms and then when i like it would depend on the season so um if it was summer outside i would find more discreet places to cut if um so I could like wear clothes and nobody would ask about it. If it was winter, I'd like feel free to cut anywhere. But my main places were like my my arms. Um, and when I decided to finally feel that I needed help, like because that's a process. Like you can't like go through and start coping until you feel like, okay, this is actually a problem now. Like let me chill. Um, it was the springtime, but it was like quite warm outside and I had cut my arm so badly and I went to class the next day and I'm just like man like I can't do this so I had on shorts and like a long sleeve shirt and everybody was asking me about it they're like why are you wearing that like kind of thing the fact that I had to hide and there was so much shame in it I was just like wow like this that was just like my wake-up call like I do not want to live a life where like I can't freely dress or like I have to hide how I'm dealing with my pain from the world because like that adds on another layer of judgment and another layer of stigma and another layer of this and that and the third excuse me so that's when I decided to like find other coping mechanisms for a while um, I wasn't successful my other coping mechanisms became doing things that were hurting me but not as detrimental as cutting so like I plucked myself a lot I st when I like had bad anxiety attacks I'd like slap myself or like bang my head all right I pressed the wrong button on the camera and the camera shut off and blah 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 um I think I was talking about addiction or like comparing like my cutting to an addiction um, but what I feel like it was a habitual addiction in the way that like I wasn't addicted because it felt good or like I felt good in the moment like I did not it didn't make me feel any better about it um, it made me feel worse even while I was cutting but I still did it um, but habitual in the way like this is the way that I'm used to processing things and I won't feel like I've completed my process until I do this it's like a weird like weird thing I need to stop saying weird when I'm trying to explain like I like some for me personally like when I say something is weird and I'm talking about myself it kind of invalidates like my feelings towards myself anyway 
like I said, I was transitioning to things that were also equally hurting me. I had to begin to think of it in order to reform. I had to begin to think of it as like, like this is like you're spanking yourself. Like you're, you're reprimanding yourself for something that you didn't necessarily do wrong. When I feel like cutting, I'll like just grab something in my hand. I won't say like a stress ball because those stress me out. Like I don't. To each his own, but like stress will stress me out. I'll like get something in my hand. Um, when I was at work, like when I used to like teach elementary school and there was like Play-Doh and stuff, i just take it from my free time and like just keep it on my desk and um, manipulate it when I felt like I needed to. If I feel like cutting now, it's been a really long time, but like things that I started doing to keep away from other forms of hurting myself I'd like sit on my hands I would shake my hands breathing definitely affirmations just like the general what works for calming me down during a panic attack are generally the same things that um, have helped me in my cutting process but as I get older um, and certain and I experience certain things my coping mechanisms change and I guess like I'm not here to give out tips or anything like that but I just wanted to like briefly share my story um for several reasons one to again bring visibility to the issue because it's not talked about and especially like when you when you see like you meet black people who cut I feel like there's this stigma Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you it's a stereotype. Black, young black people that cut are like culturally atypical. So it's like, it makes sense if you're black and you're cutting, if you like comic books and anime and like extreme like screaming punk rock music part of this gothic thing that's like a total misconception like we really don't know what goth is on a real tip like let somebody who's actually goth define goth for you and you're gonna be like oh is that what it is i feel like we put black people in a box with what type of um struggle they can go through in terms of mental illness and challenges it's not fair um Mental illness doesn't have a face. It's not like a respecter of race or class or gender or religion or sexuality. That's one of the reasons for doing this video. Also, um, just to have like a very fluid answer to me not having the answers. I can't say like these are the things that work for me because next year they might not work like and that's just the honest truth and that's okay that's you always just have to be willing to learn yourself and learn who you're evolving to be like as long as you are treating that person with respect and when i say that person i mean like not to say that the essence of who you are is supposed to change but you know environmental factors experiences you know life changes people they all affect like the energy that you give off and whether that's on a daily basis or like month to month year to year like I love the the I don't want to call it a meme but I love the quote that goes around on social media that's like it's totally valid if I'm not the same person I was yesterday like you need to respect that like it's so true because who's to say when you can be enlightened or when you can be awakened you know what I mean that's that um, I feel it's the same thing like in the Christian community it's like oh you lived 30 years as like this horrible person and now you want to um, live your life for God and like Christians be like oh nah but wasn't you just but wasn't you just lying that's an abomination but wasn't you just lying that's an abomination oh look I've said too much I've said too much that's it so um I just I just wanted to put this video out there to encourage somebody that's my third and final point to encourage those who are going through it or you're still trying to figure it out like one 
trial and error. Find out what works for you. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that it's never going to work. You just haven't found your thing yet. Two, be sensitive to yourself. Like, allow yourself room to, like, evolve and grow out of that and heal. Like, that's a process and you need to give yourself time for that. That's my, my third tip is to not rely on and this kind of goes like i feel like all the points are kind of like mushing together but don't rely like on me or other people who make themselves visible in the mental health community to like you can take suggestions but don't take it it's just like watching a hair tutorial don't watch a hair tutorial and missy got 3b hair and you know that you rocking your 4c and expecting your twist out to look the same like huh it's not gonna work like real talk it's not gonna work so be sensitive to that you're your own person there is individuality in every shared experience like i need to get that on a t-shirt for real because like it's so true so be true to you you're strong you're brave you're resilient you're a fighter and I'm proud of you for still being here and being open to still figuring out your purpose. That's wonderful and I'm super proud of you for that. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody that you love. Hit that subscribe button and turn the post notifications on because I am posting every single day for the month of July. And I will catch you later. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah.